Hi, Allison. Hi. You just hear the creepy lady that said, we go yes. address. <laughs> never heard that before isn't that funny so we actually um this has happened in uh, one of our previous episodes too so um first of all let me do this so uh allison i'm megan you know that but not everybody knows that so we are here on the pointing it out podcast youtube channel and um what i was just referencing is that my pal melissa mcleod and i do this podcast and she and i heard that kind of creepy lady saying recording in progress yeah. a couple of weeks ago. And we were like, what is going on? Um, but anyway, so that's a new zoom feature. And uh, we were just kind of <laughs> giggling about it, just like you and I are now. So I, um, like I said, my, my pal, Melissa McLeod and I do this podcast once a week. Um, and you can find us on YouTube, which you have done if you're here watching. And I am so excited to have Allison Sheffield, and I didn't ask if that's the right way to say it, but I, it is, it is. <laughs> that's correct. Allison um, is an interior designer and also a needle pointer. And so um, I have been sort of a fangirl for a while. And so I'm delighted to have Allison. Um, Allison, why don't you start by kind of giving us a little bit of your background and um, yeah, just go from there. Kind of start by introducing yourself. How about okay. that? Okay. Um, I'm Allison Sheffield. I am a decorator designer outside of Boston. I live on the south coast of Massachusetts with my husband and our two boys. And I've been practicing interior design for close to 20 years. Which is <laughs> uh, yeah, sort of. Yeah. 20. Um, with, with a lot of time off for, you know, momming and, uh, you know, it's, it's turned into more of a, I wouldn't even say at this point, it's entirely full-time because I still work from home. Um, but it, I'm getting closer and closer. My kids are 13 and 16 and pretty independent now. So um, I've been busier than ever. Um, but it's been a passion of mine forever. I, um, I just, I love what I do. I love my clients. I love what we create. It is just, um, it's just, a thrill to do this as a job. So it feels very so fun. So I found you on Instagram. Um, I don't know, probably during the pandemic at some point. <laughs> and, um, and first of all, your style is just um, kind of in line with what I admire. And um, but secondly, you're a needle pointer. And so I'm not sure how exactly we kind of kind of got connected. But um, I found you, I follow you and you do a beautiful job. But really quick, I forgot. So did you have, do you have um, an education in interior design or is it just something you kind of felt? I, when I first got out of college, I was in event planning for a couple of years, oh. which mm -hmm. is not entirely dissimilar from design. Mm -hmm. um, and I loved it, but I didn't, I didn't see myself doing it forever. So I quit my job and I went back to school and while I was in school, I worked for a regional editor at one of the big magazine groups. And um, she was, you know, New England region. So she lived near mm -hmm. me and we worked together. I did a lot of her um, research for the articles that she would write. And sure. so I was in school and working for her. And yeah, and then I, through her actually was, um, we had our first home featured in Better Homes and Gardens a million years ago, just as I was finishing school and working with her. Um, and that sort of started the ball rolling. So your degree is? Interior design. Interior design. Parts. Okay, cool. So you kind of have that base and then you were doing the the um, uh, special events. By the way, I was a special event. Person. Oh, come on. We have that in common also. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I get the whole, like a lot of moving pieces and parts and putting everything together. Um, so, but what we're here to kind of talk about is what I'm kind of calling using sort of needlepoint in your home. Um, that was kind of the kind of the basis for our conversation. But um, there's a lot of different parts of and things that I want to talk to you about. So we have a little bit of an outline here. But so tell us, when did you start needlepointing yourself? Okay. I probably started in my 20s. Okay. I never and to this day, I'm so embarrassed to admit this. I still have never actually had a fit project finished. So, <laughs> so I've been needle pointing. I was needle pointing in my twenties yep. as a hobby. And then I put it away. And then, um, I have a belt that's um, a flag belt. That's almost entirely stitched, but that's a whole nother point. Okay. But so, it's not. <laughs> so I put it away and then it was, to be honest, nine 11, 
I was so, so anxious. Mm -hmm. And I picked it up again. Mm -hmm. Neil pointed American flags. And um, it really, really, really soothed me. I, um, I up until recently had only done basket weave. So it really was just that like in and out and in and out. I found it to be really helpful. Meditative. Meditative. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, but once 9-11, once things settled down and then we got married and had kids, I hadn't needle pointed in, my gosh, at least 15, I mean, since 9-11. So I can't do the math, sure. had, but a very yeah. long time. Yeah. And then the pandemic hit. And the first thing I thought of was time to pick it back up. Yeah. And I did have um, a belt, not the flag belt, but another belt that had skull and crossbones on it that I hadn't, hadn't stitched in however long that I did finish. And I have sent that out to be finished. Yay. But that's, I haven't gotten it back yet. So. But you know, I think what you're doing is you're making a really good point about needlepoint is that um, it doesn't have to be the stress of this is a project I have to have this done. This is the purpose of what I, you know, I, I'm one that I will have a piece and I'll say, this is going to be a pillow for my living room. Right now I'm stitching something that I want to put in my dining room, but it doesn't have to be that because it adds pressure because I'm like, I got to hurry up. I have this blank spot on my wall. I better, you know, um, it, it, that's not the point, you know, it oh, was that a puppy or is that a kitty that just joined you? It's my girl, Evie. Sweetheart. <laughs> oh, she's up on top of the back of the couch. <laughs> So cute. I just saw some action over there. But anyway, so I, I actually appreciate that sentiment that you're not pressuring yourself to do something with your needle point. You're just saying, I like this. I, I like it's it. making me feel good. So I, I, I think not enough people do that. So I think that when I first started, when I first picked it up again, I did do um, canvases without thinking about what I would do the, do with them. And I, and I started off, I mean, I finished so many large canvases since I started up again last March. Um, and some of them I bought just because I liked them. But then then I, as I was producing so many things, then I started to think about, well, maybe I should think about where this will go. Um, but I still haven't <laughs> finished any of those projects. Either. That's okay. Well, then that actually answers a question that I had on my list, which is, so do you have anything of your own in your home? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I have. No. <laughs> I have a, I'd rather not pillow ready to be finished. Okay. I have one of the huge cheetahs um, ready to be finished. I mean, I, I have so many, um, but none of mine are, are in my house, but I have ones I've collected over the years before I even started needle pointing again, I was collecting vintage needle point pieces okay. I, because I just am so drawn to them. I always really liked um, paint by numbers. Also oh, huh. printed paint by numbers, and they're yes. they're not that dissimilar, really, when you think about it. Yes. Um, so I started collecting pieces, mostly. Um, I actually started before needlepoint. I was collecting a few cross stitch pieces, okay. all sort of chinoiserie ginger jars, and then I moved into needlepoint, and I find them. Um, they're they're so charming. They're mm -hmm. all basket weave. They're not fancy, mm -hmm. um, but they're so they're so soulful to me. Um, I just, and, and unusual to, to have in a home, I think. Well, and all very unique because no matter what they're hand done. Yes, so absolutely. Person did it. And even if I did the same thing twice, it's not going to be exactly the same because I'm doing it. It's not a machine recreating the same thing. So, yeah. so that, that, that's an interesting point that you make. And I think you're right about the soul of it too, because again, a person spent that time, spent the time had mindfulness going on yep. and was somewhat somehow thinking about something and that's one thing that I love about needlepoint the art is that you you know it's it's somebody doing it it's someone mm -hmm. that I want this color there I want this texture there I want you know so it's really interesting it's just like any piece of art like the ones behind you you know I'm looking at that going wow that's making me think needlepoint art is making you think about where did that come from and what was the impetus and why is the person stitching it and all of that. So, um, so I, I'm glad you bring that up because I think that's really smart to think about. You know, I go into needlepoint shop or excuse me, um, antique shops and I see needlepoint and I think, oh my gosh, whose was that? You know, why was that done? And so it's not being treasured anymore. Right. 
but um, so to the point, so go back to, so you were collecting them and were you collecting them like pieces that hadn't been finished? And then were you having them say framed or pillowed or whatever, or they, they were, were all already? finished when I got okay. them, mm -hmm. um, all framed. I have one fantastic pillow. I wish it was in reach one pillow and then the rest are framed. Um, actually one piece I did frame. I happen to have a frame and it fit right in. Um, and it's really sweet. I'll, um, I can put it up in a story. It's a sweet little house in the country, um, almost folk arty, but the frame I had for it was this big chunky gold frame. And I just love the juxtaposition of the two. Sure. Um, yeah. It hangs in our living room and I just, it's so sweet. So for those people who haven't visited your Instagram page before, I will say, um, because again, I keep talking about how I'm fangirling, I have kind of scoured, but Allison does a really great job of showing in her photos on Instagram, the like say the, the piece of art with the texture of the wallpaper or whatever. So you've you've not only done a good job um, kind of, kind of uh, communicating that in your Instagram, but also it just shows a lot of the needlepoint that you have in your home. So for people who haven't seen, she's got a lot of her needlepoint on her feed on Instagram. Um, and then maybe whatever you don't have that we talk about, you could throw up in a story uh, maybe, yeah. maybe next week or something. But the one that I'm thinking of that I, um, I is I think a vintage um, chinoiserie or it's these two, maybe it's men or women. Maybe it's like two, what, so do you know what I'm talking about? And yes. And you know, what so I, funny, I went around my house today and I was trying to count all the different ones and okay. I thought about them. They're fantastic. They're enormous. Um, the sort of piece that, you know, you catch your breath when you, when you find it. Right. And so, so you um, tend to have, at least based on the photographs and the kind of, I looked at your folio online and whatever, um, you tend to do kind of stick with that chinoiserie a little bit. That's kind of like your wheelhouse. I love it. It is, but the needlepoint isn't all that themed. Some it's is, not. but some's not. And so two things. I want you to kind of talk about your own personal style and how you style for other people, kind of what your wheelhouse is. But also I want you to kind of talk about, is it important to stay within that kind of wheelhouse when you're adding art and particularly needlepoint to your home? So I don't know where you want to start, but those are two things that I'm wanting you to kind of talk about. So okay. Um, I would say that my, my style is based in a very traditional sense, um, but I do think that I bring to it a certain edge and I'm, I'm married to an artist who has a different aesthetic than mine. So as we've melded them, his aesthetic, and he has a much more modern sort of cleaner look than mine as I've as we've melded them it's really it's really affected my own sense of style my own aesthetic um I also don't think that I'm traditional in a in a terribly feminine way um okay. I use a lot of um rich colors and um mm -hmm. I sort of skew traditional but not Victorian um and what I love about chinoiserie is um just the richness of the colors and the um the graphics to me, yeah. I'm calling them graphics because I don't know what else to call them. The sure. the, the shapes are so um, so lovely, so traditional. Um, it, I just find it such to me all of chinoiserie is just lovely, just you know deeply lovely, elegant and beautiful, and um, I love incorporating it into my style. I grew up in a house, my grandmother and my mother. Both, I didn't call it chinoiserie at the time, but had all sorts of chinoise, you know, um, you know, uh, they do food dogs or bamboo, yeah. you know, Chinese Art Deco rugs or like um, or or screens with like bone and um, wow, lots of beautiful stuff. Um, so it's very familiar to me. I tend to um, use a lot of grab. Um, I like tribal rugs or even like uh, the wallpaper behind me. Things yes. that have, um, I like to contrast them, the sharper lines with the chinoiserie because it does bring in a bit of that femininity, but not too much. Well, and I think um, something that is familiar to us in the needlepoint world right now, and not to, uh, I want not to take you off track here, but when you say feminine, there's this new grand millennial term that everyone's using and you see it now everywhere. I don't really know where, but like, um, but so this whole grand millennial idea is, I think taking these old styles, old school traditional things 
and kind of making them new again. But what I'm seeing a lot of in that in that vein, and again, you know more about this than I do, but is ruffles and pinks, yeah. light blues and lavenders and all these like really beautiful florals. But you said something that I just cracked me up on your, you said, I think I'm kind of grand millennial with more of a dark edge. <laughs> So I, is that kind of where you're like, you're saying like you you like these traditional things, but you're not doing the ruffles, the bows necessarily? Absolutely. Um, I have friends and colleagues who do it well. Um, I, it, I think that my aesthetic, the one that I, that I have for myself and that I produce for other people is kind of the same. I mean, at this point in my career, people are coming to me for, for that look. For that look. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, people that want, roughly things are, you know, knocking on my door, which is fine. Um, I just like, instead of having everything be, you know, pink and, and roughly, I, you know, I have black in every room. Yeah. Um, you know, I like, you know, heavy, you know, you want some heft and some, some scale in your room. I just sort of, I need it to be bigger, sort of in a weird way. So you told me um, a funny story about what kind of where you thought you fit. Can you go back to that for me? And <laughs> you um, said that you and your friends were talking. Oh, um, so um, was it the, um, um, I was picked by a group yes. to showcase my style. And they're, they're a great group of Instagram friends, women on the platform, and they run a group um, called Chinoiserie Chic Style, I think is what their hashtag is. And they feature a different um, account every week. And a couple of years ago, they featured me and I was so honored. Um, and they described it, my taste as, um, sh you know, Chinoiserie Chic Style, or no, she said, um, Allison proves that Chinoiserie can have an edge. I like and I've that. always loved that because um, I think that sort of, boils down what I love about the designs I create in such a great way. Well, and I also think why it speaks to me and why it should probably speak to a lot of people who are stitchers is that there are this whole new group of stitchers, 20 year old women. And we have, I have an employee who's 18. I mean, these like, they're, the, they're kind of like the grand millennials, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't fit into that category age wise. <laughs> and I love that whole, um, what is old is new again, but I feel like I'm kind of in the, the other category that maybe I'm a little darker and a little edgier. <laughs> um, but so back to so back to what you were so your style is kind of a lot of the the what you were saying um, growing up with your grandmother and you know a lot of this and but so so then what I wanted you to kind of tease out was so do you feel like so you do have some needlepoint pieces that really truly fit that aesthetic mm -hmm. but then you're kind of layering on or marrying kind of what you just said which was like this like like folk art scene or something that yeah. he isn't in that same vein, but kind of, how do you? So it's funny, I, I, it's, this is the timing is great because I'm actually working with a client um, right now. And how this particular client, we're, we're starting from scratch. Like they don't have any of the elements. And so I put together some ideas for them and um, using the, you know, the elements that you know, you know, a vintage rug and a, you know, a chest of drawers and a great mirror and bench and some wallpaper. And as I was putting it together, she was like, oh, you know, well, I love the idea of the chest of drawers, but I think, you know, it, instead of it looking so traditional, could we do sort of more of a mid-century modern? And what I kind of realized about how I work and even my own home is that anything almost fits because right. I don't have like a really specific style you can put you know you start with a great you know vintage harris on your floor and you can bring in you know almost any style brown you know mahogany piece of furniture and i don't stick with any particular style for any of the art i mean i'm just looking around the room right now i mean really what i think is more important than than any particular style is beauty you know beauty, surround yourself with beauty, collect beautiful things, you know, buy beautiful vintage furniture or, you know, beautiful pillows. And I think that if your style sort of isn't too specific, anything can work. It all kind of works together. Somebody once told me, buy what you like. 
Yes. And then it will all sort of come together. And I feel like I can tend to be a little, like I like gingham, but I like chinoiserie. And I, so my style might look a little wacky. Like a little I bet it doesn't though. I bet it doesn't. I think that any home, any successfully designed home looks collected, whether it actually was collected over many years or whether it was collected more quickly with the help of a professional. Um, I don't go for trends. I don't go for themes. I don't choose things for myself or my clients that will be out of style eventually at any, you know, I don't. Right. And, you know, there, there are trends that are trends, but if you, um, if you, if you use them, if you use things that become trendy, but you use them because they're classic, you know, forever mm -hmm. pieces, they'll be trendy right. for a while and then they won't be trendy, but they'll always be classic. Right. Like that, right. Like that. Yeah, it does. Um, and so here's the other thing that people say to me a lot is, um, oh, I've got so many needlepoint pillows. I can't possibly stitch another needle. <laughs> and I'm like, in my brain, I can see like the most awesome, like big, long sofa with like a thousand needle. Yes. Like, yes. Do, you think, do you think somebody can have too much of one thing? Do you think, I mean, how, can, how do you picture like saying to some, cause I'm saying, well, per, first of all, I'm selling needlepoint. So I'm like, you could never have too much. Uh, but secondly, in my brain, I think you could never have, I truly think, how could you ever have too much? Um, but maybe there is a point where you walk in a room and it's all needlepoint or it's all blue and white. And, you know, do you have any thoughts on that at all? Or I think, that, I think there probably is a line, a fine line, <laughs> at some point. but, um, but I mean, you know, every needlepoint pillow is different. Right. You know, I, of all the things that I've stitched over the past year, um, they're all they're all they're all unique in their own way. And I think too, you know, there's a whole like, you know, husbands hate pillow, you know, too many pillows on the sofa, yes. the whole thing. <laughs> um, and I, you know, that that's real world. That's it's real to me. That's why I'm giggling. <laughs> why do I have all these pillows here? <laughs> but I think that you know, if you have. I also am a huge proponent of having houses with rooms. Um, so we live in a we live in a house from it's you know a hundred years old. It's got many rooms, um, and so I can keep pillows on my living room sofa because we don't use it every day. Um, you know, if we do go in there, you know, yes, my boys will knock the pillows onto the floor and whatever else, but it's sort of a place to display them because we don't use it regularly we're not in there as often as we're in the sunroom or the tv room or the mm -hmm. family room so i think that um i mean i think that if you're spending time needle pointing pillows you love them and you want them in your home so i don't think but the other thing is you know i would put needle point if and when i finally finish get all my needle point projects are finished by me they're just not haven't been sent to a finisher to finish completely right i would put them in my kids rooms i would put them in you know i think they can go anywhere kind of disperse and i like what you're saying about different rooms too so um because i think a lot of these open concept homes probably it's hard for people to you look in one big giant room and you're like oh there's so much needle point yeah. I think that even if you, um, and I just, just noticing kind of the way you kind of vignette things a little bit too, when you, so like a little seating area here, a little area here. And so a little bit of needlepoint can, you, you can end up with a lot of it in a lot of different spots and it doesn't look like you have too much would be, is that kind of how you're? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Cut it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then what about coordinating? So like you're saying you have three different pillows. So what if, if a person waited and had, you know, let's say three or four needlepoint pillows, and maybe they don't appear to coordinate. That kind of what would be, don't you think, I mean, the colors, or you could use the fabric, or you could make them all finished in the same way, or can, can you picture, how do you picture doing that? Do you have a thought on that? So shapes or sizes or ruffles or not ruffles or, you know. So I tend to so when I do finally get my pillows finished mm -hmm. I will probably have them finished very cleanly okay. um, so the needle point alone like I um it, the needle point alone is the is the decoration gotcha so, um I just lean towards cleaner lines uh -huh. um, as far as I get okay so um it took me a couple canvases to realize that I could switch colors if I wanted to. Okay, and sure. So, um, and so 
I did start thinking about it differently when I realized that I could. Mm -hmm. And I did actually think about the canvas in terms of the fabric I used to finish it because I do have a lot of fabrics left over from jobs, past jobs. Sure. And so I did start thinking about them more critically. I mean, at first I feel like I picked up needlepoint as just like a lifeline. Mm -hmm. And then I, when I really got into it again, I did sort of think about, well, what will I do with this? Right. So I would bring the fabric into my local shop to pick the thread so that they match so that it is sort of a, um, it will have a place yep. eventually. But I do think I've seen displays of needlepoint pillows that are, you know, just all different colors. Uh -huh. And, and I, I love that look. It just kind of sings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's collected yeah. and it's, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. So speaking of doing your own pieces and um, I had a note here about, so now that you're um, doing some different stitches, you're mm -hmm. probably realizing that that really creates different texture. Yes. Um, and so my guess is that that's opening up a designer kind of new world for you. Yes, I have to say though, I am intimidated by some of them. And um, so right now my, my go-tos are basket weave and diagonal mosaic. I do need to branch out and I have an amazing backgammon board canvas that I had that I bought the chinoiserie one with the oh yes I think it might be the Ann Fisher I think she yes did. yes yes mm -hmm. I haven't even bought threads I just bought it because I knew that I wanted to do it and I want to learn some good stitches for that so I can really do it justice. Oh, cool. Because that will really become a tabletop piece at some yeah. point. I want to make it into a tray, a yes. vacuum and board tray with the slots for the, um, yep. the, the, whatever they're called. Uh, the pieces. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the game pieces, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, and that, the other thing would be really cool would be, I've never seen anyone do, well, I've seen it real vintage like using an entire tabletop to have it inlaid in a tabletop would be cool too <laughs> amazing really would oh my gosh um so so you're thinking what the way that that'll sing even more to you the artwork's beautiful but then kind of the texture and the color and kind of switching fibers even might be I marvel at the ones that I see that are that are just I mean there it's really art it, it really right. is and I love the idea that and again, this didn't occur to me until I was well into it, um, that people interpret the canvas the way that 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 they want to. Um, mm -hmm. I started to feel guilty for a little while that I was just doing basket weave when I was seeing all these, you know, works of art um, with different stitches. But, you know, I'll get there eventually. I just think that, you know, buying sort of, I know they're not, you know, mass produced, but like buying the same canvas by the same artist um, and just really making it your own. Yours, yeah. Well, you know, you referred to that earlier when we were talking just now about, you know, the vintage pieces. There, People didn't do all of these crazy stitches, but those vintage pieces still are very inspiring. They are. Even though they are just the basket weave and are, you know, just wool is probably what they were. Yes, yes all of them there was are. No silk, there was no sparkle, there was, you know, none of that. Um, was included. Now, another thing, speaking of, um, that I just was kind of looking down my list of things. I, so I'm seeing you sit behind um, these framed pieces behind you. And I know that those are um, works of art from your, your husband's collection. Yes. And of course, those are all in glass. So do you have um, thoughts on when something's framed for your mm -hmm. home? Um, and it's a textile art. So whether it's needlepoint, whether it's cross stitch, whether it's some kind of fiber art, what do you, do you have thoughts on whether there should be glass, whether there shouldn't be glass? I think a big kind of thing in the needlepoint world where we want to protect our artwork. You right, know, right, right, right. See, it can get whatever. But I also think there's something to be said for letting that kind of that textile do its own work without being behind glass. So I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that too. Well, it's funny that you say that's because I'm just thinking to the pieces that I have in my house. All of the cross stitches are behind glass but not one of the needlepoint pieces is. And I don't think that I would put, uh, some of them are matted, okay. um, sort of to cover, I imagine, the rough edges. The, the canvas, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. to cover the canvas, but none of them have glass. And I do think that it would take away a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they also, and again, they're all basket weave and they are all wool. And so they don't feel that delicate. Right. So they're, they're just completely exposed, so which I love. 
Um, and do you think that that helps add some texture more so like than the glass? Like on the glass I feel would take away some of the, mm -hmm. you know, that the, the texture of it. Right, right. Um, because I think about that, with, that's I think why I like pillows so much too, is you get that texture, you get that um, open kind of more of a um, density or not, you know, with the stitches and things. Um, so I think, yeah, I just, and that's interesting you say, because um, we were just, I was just talking to someone about framing and, oh yes, of course I'm going to put it under glass. I want to protect it. And it's like, yeah, I can see that, but I also like the idea of having it. And I think that's kind of a shift too. Like in the seventies, you saw all those um, uh, Bargello pieces and things that were in those open frames. And um, I, I think it probably has to do with the type of frame you're using too, like to whether it looks aged or out of date or, you know, kind of more of a lacquered thing or something, you know. Um, but yeah, so so do you, would you suggest a person find a an interior designer to talk them through kind of how do you, I mean, of course you would because you're probably part of the ASID or whatever, but I just wonder like, is that something you talk to your clients about? And would that be a reason to hire an interior designer is just to kind of incorporate your own artwork? Um, yeah, I think that, I think that collecting and hanging art, whether it's your own or um, if you're, you know, sourcing it from other people can be intimidating for, mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. um, I use art in every project that I do um, because I think that it is, you know, one of the elements that makes a space uniquely yours. Mm -hmm. um, I would not shy away from hanging my own, one's own art pieces um, because they really are, they are a form of artwork. So I think that um, absolutely would encourage people to use them. Um, I do think that people feel intimidated by hanging art in their homes because they're putting nails in the walls or what have you. Um, mm -hmm. And so having someone that can help you sort of lay it out. Also, you know, and this this isn't, you know, these aren't just professional secrets, but um, the scale of your piece and the height on the wall that you hang it. Oh yeah. So, so, so important. Um, so those are things to keep in mind. Um, I go into homes all the time and either the art's too low or it's too high. There is, you're supposed to hang the center of a piece 60, 60 inches to center, which is right about um, the eye. average eye level. Okay. So 60 inches, uh, like 58, 60 inches to center, puts it in the, on the right, and you know, it depends a little bit on the scale and size, but uh, on the right level. Um, and you I don't have... want to leave things, you know, I don't do a lot of gallery walls and just looking around, but I do have every wall that I'm looking at has more than one piece on it, gotcha. you know, either this way or this way. Um, mm -hmm. it just, you want them to have a little bit of presence and some weight. And so, um, and a few pieces together will always be more impactful than, than just one. Well, I'm also wondering about as far as scale. So maybe before you even go to have it framed, say to your designer, like, here's where I want to put it. So like how, how big of a mat? Or, yes. What is the final, because that's something I think that people um, don't think about either is they're like, I just did this little thing and I'm like, yeah, but wouldn't it be cool to do, I mean, and I'm not an interior designer, <laughs> but wouldn't it be cool to have a big mat and a big frame and I don't know in or cool or hip or. <laughs> I, I mean, that's the kind of thing that I, that I hesitate to even say is in or out because it is just something that will, I think in my mind, be good forever. It is you the know. piece. A and the, um, I don't think that, that um, like the size of a mat or the scale of a frame um, needs to be, you know, uh, trending. I mean, I think that, that sure. you know, the, you just sort of, if you do something classic, if you choose something classic and, you know, I don't think that you need to think too much about, will this look dated? Um, right. right. And, and so even junk supposing, as you said earlier, like a couple of things might help you. So if you do want to like do something that if you are a person that likes to be kind of trendy, you could always just throw in a, a new piece just to trend it up a little bit. And then you, is, is that kind of what you're saying? And like, yeah. And I also think that um, 
artwork doesn't have to be placed once forever. I think oh, uh, point taken. things around is, is helpful. I mean, I have things in my house that I hung in a few different places before I found the place where I really feel like they're meant to be. Sure. Um, I think people get nervous about putting walls, nails into walls. And I think we have an old house and every time I put a nail in, plaster crumbles out and it's yep. you know, a nuisance, but, um, but I do it anyway, because I want to move things and I want, you know, I want to really figure out what looks best where, and I, you know, you can replace the holes and, you know, right. touch the paint and, um, yeah, and I, I command strips, right? Do people use those? And I don't even shy away from hanging, um, putting nails in wallpaper. I just, you know, you, the wallpaper is one layer and then put something on top of it. There's your next layer. Right, right. I, yeah, I think that's really good. I'm actually um, just, I'm just marveling by like people just, I think people get too intimidated by their own abilities. You know what I'm saying? Like you just got to do it is kind of what you've done. Just do it. Just try it. And then ask a friend, what do you think? Or, you know, the other thing I think we get caught up in is people will say, well, what do you think? And I'm like, well, what do you think? Because this is your art, you know? Um, and I think uh, it's interesting though, because I think needlepoint, I think is tough. It, it is kind of paint by number in some ways, like you said earlier. Yeah. And I think people are just kind of like, oh, I have to put yellow here, you know? And so then you kind of get stuck in that I'm following the rules. Mm -hmm. it's hard to tell yourself, well, I don't have to follow rules really in the end, you know? And um, I think that's why this podcast has been interesting for us to talk to different people and gain different perspectives because it kind of just proves you don't have to do what you think you have to do. <laughs> I mean, you can put holes in your, you know, it doesn't matter. Like just, it, it's live and let live, man, you know? <laughs> I mean, if anything from this past year is like any, you know, little bit of knowledge has been gleaned, it's, it's, it's that. Yeah, I totally agree. And I'm just, so I'm just kind of running through our list of questions and I'm wondering, is there anything that you would like to share about yourself or about your, your design work or your own needle point that we haven't really talked about? I mean, I think you've done a great job of just kind of helping us understand ways to use different styles of needlepoint, ways, um, and, and like you said, just do what you love. Um, and it, it, is there anything else about your design work that we haven't talked about? Um, I guess just going back to the vintage pieces that I've collected over time, um, what I love about them and what I always really encourage people to consider when they're doing their home is to bring in what we talked we've been talking about this but the bring in the one of a kind piece the piece that no one else is going to have and whether it's something that your grandmother stitched or something that you found at a thrift shop um it's bringing in some history and some soul and a and some patina that you don't get if you only shop you know in catalogs or you know Big box. Pottery barns. Yeah. Um, I think that it, it brings a unique layer to your space. And, and even if it wasn't, you know, even if you don't have a very specific tie, I mean, I don't know who paint, who needle pointed any of the vintage pieces I have, but I know that someone put a lot of time and thought into them. Yes. And I just think it adds a really nice layer to your home. I think that's a great, I think that's a great way to end. Honestly, I think adding a layer to your home with your needlepoint is exactly what I was hoping to, to kind of address in this episode. And I really appreciate your perspective. So I, I, that's awesome. So you've just been lovely to talk to. I hope that everyone will get to um, your Instagram. And I think I just saw the shadow of possibly your husband walking by. <laughs> <laughs> my oldest and my husband ju were just shorn at the barber. <laughs> uh -oh. Well, what I, what I wanted to end with here is that yeah. if you haven't followed Allison on Instagram, not only will you get a great um, education about decorating in your home, but you will also get on Friday evenings, I hope you continue to do this, the Sheffield Cocktail Hour, which is in this mind-blowing bar space that is so stinking cool and the cool husband I don't remember his first name is it Scott Steven. that's okay Stephen Stephen sorry it was an S um he's always mixing up something fun so um this will actually these episodes air on Saturday evenings so we won't um we uh we will mi have missed the previous Friday but anyway um Sheffield cocktail hour is a lot of fun Allison you are a, a just a 
gem, uh, a, I think just a gem in the interior design world. And I appreciate you helping us fly the needlepoint flag because um, that's what we love here at the Pointing It Out podcast and here at the Needlepoint Clubhouse. So um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Your um, gracious suggestions. And uh, we will talk to you again soon, I hope. I hope so. I really, I'm very flattered to have been here today. Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.